Okay. So I have connected other device also. So in case uh, <clears throat> if you want to use chat box, that also you can do and you can open your mic and ask questions. So all options are available to you. <clears throat> so I have divided uh, 5G core architecture in four parts. We'll try to cover in the first half. So this is first part. So in first part, we will just look at high level 5G system and reference point architecture. Please note the name reference point architecture because we will also talk about service based architecture. So you should understand the difference between the two. And then we will look at PDU sessions that is protocol data unit sessions and quality of service flow in a very brief so that uh, when we talk about different network functions, we are able to correlate what exactly uh, is happening. And then we will talk about in this part one uh, key network functions of 5G, some of the important network functions of 5G like uh, AMF. AMF is access and mobility function. Then we'll talk about SMF, which is session management function and then we have upf user plane function then pcf policy control function and then we have udm unified data management we will also uh, compare these with our 4g architecture so that you are able to correlate uh, you have gone through uh, 4g architecture and other aspects so you'll be able to correlate and also as uh, some someone was telling that uh, uh, some part in 4G is left. So wherever possible, I'll try to compare with 4G and also cover the 4G part wherever you feel that was not covered. So let us start from a high level 5G system and then we will look at reference point architecture. So this picture is a high level 5G system and this is similar to uh, 4G, 3G or 2G that you have user equipment. In case of 5G, user equipment can be mobile, can be any object, can be machine. So it can be a drone, it can be a car or it can be any object or device. So that is the difference from earlier generation of the network wherein prime focus earlier was only with the mobile phone. Whereas 5G will support not only phone which we use, but also it will connect any kind of object and equipments. Then we have RAN part, radio access network. Here we call it Z node B. In 4G, the name given was, can somebody tell me what was the name in 4G? The e RAM. E node B. E node B. E -node B. E -node B. Yes, correct. It was evolved node B. In 5G, we also call it new radio, NR. Many a times you will hear that it is being called NR, new radio or NR. And after that, we have 5G core network, which may consist of multiple network functions like AMF, SMF, PCF, and so on. So we have a core network. And then we have a data network. Do you remember what we used to call this in 4G? What was the name given in 4G? EPC, <coughs> Evolved <coughs> Packet Core. Evolved Packet Core or we used to call it Evolved Packet Core was name of the entire core. I'm just talking about the data network part. What was the name given? Do you remember? Do you recall PDN? So it was a PDN, packet right? Packet Data Network. Packet data ah, so it was, it was a data network, but in 5G, we are calling data network. Uh, can you guess what is the difference? 
can you guess why we are calling data network and not calling uh, packet data network? Maybe uh, uh, one of the key difference from 4G. Uh, IMS systems and uh, those things uh, are also there, maybe because of that. So that was also oh, there in 4G. That was also yeah. there in 4G. So difference is that 5G not only supports IP type of traffic. So when we say packet data network, we actually mean the IP type of a traffic, right? But when we say the pure data network, it can be any other kind of data network, which is not a IP data network, right? So that means 5G also support some kind of structured data, right? In addition to the packet data. So, uh, like what, sir? So for example, uh, so normally in IP data, you have a lot of overhead, header and all, right? But suppose yeah. you, have to, you want to serve IoT devices where you want to use very, very small bandwidth. So IP traffic is not suitable because a lot of overhead is there in the IP. So there we use structured data, just like our uh, signaling messages, right? So that's why we call it uh, data network. So any kind of data network it supports. It can be, uh, of course, IMS or any service, any application function, and also so kind of. Is there any standard? Uh, is there any standard uh, related to that? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, yes, that is there for. I mean, the 5G defines that what kind of structure data it will be supporting. Okay. Okay. So now, end-to-end -end system is called 5GS. So when we say 5GS, we mean the complete network from UE uh, to NG RAN to 5G core network and the data network. So that is our 5G system. OK, so let's move forward. So I was talking about two kind of uh, architecture which 5G uh, has in the sense that if you look at 3GPP specification, I would request that I had shared the 3GPP specification related to the architecture. At least you should scan through, right? So you'll see that every diagram is made twice, one in reference point architecture and one in service based architecture. So in a reference point architecture, why it is called reference point architecture? Because each network functions are connected to each other on a specific reference. So they follow a specific protocol between the two, right? So, and these are numbered like N15, N8, N10, N11. In practice, the service based architecture will be deployed. But to understand the functionality, what kind of uh, communication they make with each other, these reference points are discussed throughout the 3GPP documentation. So we will start with reference point architecture and understand how these network functions are interacting with, with each other. In this picture, I have only taken five uh, core network functions. That is MF, access and mobility function, SMF, session management function, UDM, unified data management, PCF policy control function and UPF user print functions. And then we have taken uh, the other aspects. So these five network functions sir, will be. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir, this uh, N8, N11, N10, are these uh, some uh, transport pro uh, protocol? Uh, these are kind of a uh, uh, point to point protocols, right? You can say that point to point, how they will talk to each other. Those protocols are defined, right? Okay. But okay. Uh, they will be communicating through fiber optic uh, network or can be any any type of network. So it because these are core network function, so they will be deployed uh, at the same location <coughs> mostly, or it can be also deployed in a distributed way. So that they in as I am saying in practice, they will be deployed based on a service based architecture that means they are connected on some kind of a network right 
some kind of a network so underlying transport can be even radio can be fiber can be cable can be anything doesn't really matter okay sir okay so uh, so name we have understood now uh, let us go one by one so first of all before i look into each network functions let us understand what these protocol data unit sessions and and then what is quality of service flow in a very brief i have a separate session on qos so uh, there will go in detail but before we talk about every network function this is important so let me ask you that the data flow the user traffic data flow uh, will be handled by which all network functions can uh, some of you guess and tell me udm amf smf anyone else sir pcf also will apply that uh... i'm talking about just a uh, flow of user traffic how uh, because suppose uh, you yeah, are sir uploading some data so it will go to which all network functions i'm talking about just pure user data right where suppose uh, uh, ue is uploading a picture or a movie uh, right so which all network function will be used for that traffic i'm not talking about the control signaling part so leave apart control signaling just look at the user data where sir, it will flow sir uh, you, uh, upf it will take uh, yeah. from gnb and then upf will come sir user plane function yes so sir is right anybody else want to answer this sir so amf also amf okay any other guess by anybody else okay so tusar was right so if i just see i segregate this so this is your kind of a user plane your user data flows from ue to z node b to upf and to a data network if you are accessing say internet so it will be a internet data network if you are accessing voice it will be ims if you are accessing something else then that data network if you are enterprise customers or enterprise uh, data it will be accessing so this is your user plane so we call this as a user plane because actual user traffic flows through these network function is this clear to all of you say yes or no or in the chat box you say yes or no yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes. sir will it not go through amf no amf only signaling part will be taken care not the user plane traffic so yes not only amf smf udm pcf no where it will go your user traffic goes only through upf to the data network your radio upf and data network so if the traffic has to go here so that means the session which will get created for an user has to be in this plane only from user equipment to z node b to upf and then finally to the data network so whenever a user tries to access data either in upload direction or in download directions what is created is pdu session so pdu session is protocol data unit session it's not packet just understand the name given is protocol data unit session do you recall what we used to call this in 4g rakesh let rakesh answers yes sir do you recall that pdu session which is a kind of on which the data traffic flows in 5g similar concept yes. was there in 4g what was the name given to the uh, it was like a some tunneling or something yes it it is a tunnel but i am asking about what is the name given here we call it pdu session 
in 4G we used to call it yeah, it was ECS ECS EPS EPS yeah EPS something like yes yes so it was called EPS session here it is being called PDU session there was another name given for EPS session in 4G uh, maybe Rahul uh, Rahul Jain the name of EPS session in 4G there was another name given uh, do you recall Rahul Jain no sir Okay, Rahul Chauhan, Monica, anyone, anyone. Okay, let anyone answer. The bearer tunnel. Bearer identification. Bearer tunnel, sir. So those were kind of a sub. Inside the session, there were certain tunnels, right? So other name given to EPA session was PDN connection. Do you recall that PDN packet data yes, connection? Yes, 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 sir. EPS session is equal to PDN session is equal to PDU session in 5G. So what is a PDU session? In fact, it is a series of connection. What it is? It is a series of connection from UE to Z node B to UPF and then to the data network. It is just an connection, series of connection starting from UE to Z node B that is on uh, air interface. Then uh, to UPF that is some kind of tunnel and then to the data network. So that is your PDU session. Okay. So uh, I hope you recall your 4G. That uh, when whenever you attach to the network. What used to happen? Do you recall that a EPS session is created for you, right? Yes, sir. Similarly, in 5G also, whenever a user equipment connects to the network, either for the first time or maybe uh, uh, it want to uh, 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 upload or download some data in between. So a session is created for it and that is called PDU session. And PDU session will carry your traffic either in uplink direction or in downlink direction. So end to end we call it PDU session. Now the PDU session which got created is unique for a particular UE. That means one PDU session will not cater to more than one user equipment. Is it clear? The PDU sessions are unique to a yes. particular UE. <clears throat> But can a UE have more than one PDU session? The question is whether UE can have more than one PDU session. Any answer from any of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. One UE may have more than one PDU session. Can you tell me the scenario? What can be scenario of having more than one PDU On different session? Different applications. Yeah. May, may not be. May not be. Same PDU session can handle. Uh, you, if you recall, if you recall, quality of service. The carrier aggregation. Carrier aggregation can be yes. One of the example which I give to make it very clear that in 5G we support. Uh, in addition to the 3GPP access, even we support non 3GPP access. For example. If you have say Wi-Fi at your home, which is not 3GPP, which is not based on 3GPP, so we call it non-3GPP access. In 5G, such non-3GPP access can also connect to 5G core. That means 5G core will have multiple access. One is the new radio or Z node B, other can be your Wi-Fi, or it can even be a residential gateway. So 5G supports multiple non 3GPP access and one device. Suppose you have a 5G uh, phone can connect to more than one access simultaneously. That means my mobile is connected to new radio on air interface and also connected to Wi-Fi and getting uh, connected to the core. In that case, if I'm if uh, my device is connected to two access and 
I'm having a combined data. So for me, there will be a two PDU session created. One on the new radio path, other on the Wi-Fi path. And finally, this will merge somewhere in, in 5G network and I'll have an aggregate throughput. So an UV can have more than one PDU session, but one PDU session will be specific to one user equipment. Now my question is, do you recall in 4G that EPS session used to have multiple quality of service flows? Do you recall that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here also. We have. Different kind of QS flow. Right. If you recall in 4G, uh, you had guaranteed bitrate type quality of service flow, non GBR type quality of service flow and so on. Right. So here also you have. So within a PDU session, there can be one or more QS flow, right? And here every QS flow. Is identified by its ID, right? So what we call it QFI. Just remember. QFI. Quality of service flow ID. So every quality of service is identified in 5G by a number called QFI, QS flow ID. So now let me explain you what happens when a uh, user. Yeah. Is, it, is it similar to QCI in 4G? So QCI in 4G is equivalent to 5QI in 5G. And it is not exactly equal to QFI. So that is the difference because the QCI parameters, whatever parameter you have, is managed at radio interface level, whereas there are certain other parameters at the other part of the tunnel, right? Between, say, uh, UPF and uh, data network or UPF and G node B. Uh, we have different parameters. So QCI is only on radio. All the parameters of the QCI is on radio in 5G I'm talking about. And not on other aspects. So here the main identification for quality of service flow is the QFI and it is not equivalent to QCI. Please remember that. This was a very good question and this is this is a doubt when you start reading document. The first doubt you get is that QCI is equivalent to QFI. No, it is 5QI, which I'll talk about when I take quality of service uh, session for you guys. OK. Now, let me talk about what happens when a user equipment uh, connects to the network and want to use data. So as in 4G, 4G also you might have uh, might be remembering that a uh, default bearer was created, right? You remember? Do you remember that in 4G? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You yes, had default yes, bearer and you had dedicated, dedicated bearer. Bearer. Event. Here uh, we call it. If I mean here we call it QS flow only. So it is default QS flow. So whenever a user equipment gets connected to the network, a PDU session is created and along with the PDU session, one quality of service flow is added. And this quality of service is a default. Quality of service flow and also it is. Non GBR. What is non GBR? Non guaranteed bitrate. Guaranteed bitrate. Right. So default QS flow is always non GBR type, right? And this default QS flow remains till this PDU session is available, right? So PDU session can be actually modified, can be terminated. Suppose if no more data 
is being used by the user equipment so it can be terminated but it can also be modified when i say modify suppose uh, ue uh, has uh, this default qs flow added and it want to use a service say for example suppose uh, it want to make a voice call so for voice call i need a gbr kind of qs flow right and signaling of the voice is also a uh, other kind of qs flow that is non gbr so the two qs flow will be added when a user want to do a voice call in addition to the default qs flow similarly if user want to uh, avail a streaming service which may require a different quality of service so a separate qs flow with gbr type of qs flow will be added so that means our pdu session may contain <coughs> one or more than one qs flow within pdu session and those qs flow can be gbr type or can be non gbr type and it will have various parameter defined to support that service any doubt till this point no sir hello okay. sir uh, what this qs flow is uh, doing actually i did not understand so basically uh, the qs flow is the lowest kind of a unit inside a pdu session where uh, uh, for example suppose uh, suppose a service requires uh, x mbps of guaranteed speed so within the qs flow that much speed would be guaranteed then uh, there is also a limit that uh, it is not always on the guaranteed level that is the minimum required so the network will try to provide more than that so there is also a limit of maximum bitrate mbr you might have so the mbr will be managed within the qs flow uh, it will be managed in a way that it will have a minimum guaranteed bitrate and there will be a maximum bitrate also it will not go beyond that similarly there is there may be a latency requirement so that latency has to be maintained within the qs flow so resources are allocated in such a way that all these aspects are taken care is that clear to you okay sir thank you sir oh, i have a question yeah, sir uh, one pdu session can have only one default qs flow or it can have multiple default qs flow so default qs flow is only one and then it can have many other qs flow and default qs flow is non gbr and then you can have n number of qs flow flows depending upon what user equipment is trying to access and those qs flow can either be non gbr or can be a gbr okay so similarly in 4g in each eps session we can have one dedicated and uh, one uh, default and multiple dedicated bureau channels yes uh, i mean similar concept here So the difference is uh, somewhere else, which we will talk about when we'll have session on quality of service. Hello, excuse me, sir. Yeah, sir, please. Uh, no, you have told that uh, between UE and data network, there can be non 3GPP access. Also, in that also, uh, whether uh, QoS uh, fl flows are, are there, or is it something different there, sir? So there also we will manage quality of service, right? There also there are ways. where uh, a tunnel so for example let me tell you that suppose it is a, uh, a non 3gpp wireless access right so it is not radio it is just a maybe a fiber between the two or or, or some kind of bandwidth backhaul is there so there also similar tunnel would be created for so each pdu session so that means we will manage QS flow in non 3GPP environment also. Okay, so like there will be one default uh, QS uh, will be there and multiple uh, uh, depending upon the application there will be non GBR and GBR QS flows like that only. Yeah, yeah. So basically, okay. if you if you uh, 
uh, I don't know. You have not scanned through my PPTs I had given. No, I requested you just scan through. There is a picture given how those PDU sessions are there for non 3G PP, which I'll do it today itself in the first half. It will make you make this concept clear. OK, so now let us come to uh, various network functions of 5G. What exactly they do in a very, very uh, uh, kind of a from a top level. We are not going into procedure part, which is a very complex one. So we'll just be talking about the broad function of uh, these five network functions which I have chosen to explain. OK, so just see this again. Uh, I have come back to that reference point architecture. So what we are trying to cover is the AMF. Just before I say, uh, 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 tell about its function, let us see where all it is connected. So just see it is connected to your user equipment on some interface N1. It is connected to your G node B on N2. It is connected to unified data management and it is connected to policy control function and also it is connected to SMF session management functions. So five interfaces it, it has to different network elements. So let us see what functionality it supports. So as the name suggests, name itself is access management, right? So that, mean, that means it has to manage access of some entity. Then the name is mobility. So it, it will also manage the mobility part of it. So let's start. So basically for user equipment, if user equipment want to talk to the core equipment, 5G core, the access point for user is the AMF. The user is always accessing core network through AMF. Right? Is that clear to you? And second, yes, sir. Mobility management. So when the user moves from say one G node B to the next G node B, the management of that mobility is controlled by AMF. Even user can move from one AMF area to other AMF area. So that context exchange between the two is also uh, handled by AMF from the respective network. Uh, there is a possibility that uh, user equipment is uh, from a 4G network, it is coming to 5G network and from 5G network, it is going back to 4G network. So that kind of mobility is also supported in case you have a 5G device. So that mobility will also be handled by the respective AMF and in 4G side, it will be your MMA. So what we say, it is an access point for UV and also it does mobility management. So before I proceed, uh, may I ask you that uh, this AMA function is equivalent to which network function uh, or network element in 4G? Can somebody guess maybe uh, Rahul Chauhan? Rahul, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. So, did you hear my question? Uh, yes, sir. I hear. Yeah. What I asked? Sir, you asked that uh, AMF uh, in 5G is equivalent to which part of uh, 4G? Yes. Uh, so, if you do not know the answer, let me ask Monica or Lakshmi. Monica. So if you do not, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, good. So quickly you can say that you do not know. So that uh, Lakshmi, Arjun, Akas, any one of you? Sir, the MMA. mobility management entity. Yes, Akas. MMA. Yes, yes, very right. So MME is the equivalent network function. Uh, but MME was doing something more, which we'll talk about. So at least whatever AMF is doing was being handled by MME in 4G network. So mobility management entity name also says no mobility management was also there. Okay, 
Now this uh, uh, tell me that the AMF. So which network function uh, in either 4G or 5G knows the location of user equipment? Any idea? Akash? Uh, sir, can you repeat the question? Who My knows question the is that the user locations where a UE is located because suppose uh, uh, UE is somewhere and some incoming data call is coming for that particular UE, right? Or a call or a voice call is coming. So the network should know that where HSS. HSS. Is located. HSS. Hmm. So where UE is located, a network should know that. So in 5G, AMF knows the location of the user equipment. <coughs> Access and mobility function knows the location of user equipment, right? Or the subscriber location. But suppose uh, my question is that suppose user is active, it is uh, in the sense that connected and, and some kind of PDU session is already created. In that case, AMF will be knowing the location, but up to what level? My question is up to what level? Lakshmi, can you guess? Sir, tracking area. My question, my, my question was that AMF I mean, the user equipment is active at that moment. In that case, up to what lowest level AMF will know the location? Cell ID. Yes. Yes. Very right. So when a user equipment is active, so AMF will know that in which cell ID the user is located. And accordingly, it can page and find the user equipment and data exchange can happen. And suppose now user equipment is not active. So then uh, what AMF knows about user equipment? Where it may be located? Monica was answering that. Monica? Tracking area, sir. Yes. So my next question is, what is tracking area, Lakshmi? What is tracking area? Lakshmi? Oh, sir. Uh, Just guess what is a tracking area? Tracking area means uh, I think uh, it is a uh, it consists of uh, one or more uh, G node base. Correct. One or more cell you should say. So, right? huh. Huh. Uh, so one G node B may have say three cell if there are three sectors. So one G node B may have three cells. So not necessarily that all the cells are part of tracking area. So a cluster of cells is a tracking area. So AMF will at least know the tracking area of that user equipment if it is not active, if it is say idle. So it has to page in the entire tracking area, right? It has to send a paging message to find out that UE in the entire tracking area and the user equipment reads the paging message and, and, and can identify that whether the message is for the, uh, that UE or not. So that means paging messages are read by all the UE in the area and uh, there is an identity inside the paging message and it knows that it, this message is for me or not. And if the message is for it, then it, uh, I mean, wakes up and makes a connection and, and data exchange takes place. Okay, so there is a new concept in 5G, which was not there in 4G called registration area. So let me ask some of you, uh, maybe Arjun and Akash should answer that. Then what is registration area? So we have now know the tracking area, we know the cell ID. Now what is registration area? This question is for Arjun and Akas. Lakshmi, you can mute your mic. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
uh, these are uh, like it's uh, some sort of list of like more than one uh, tracking areas sort of the uh, tracking area list yes you are right to some extent so which tracking area would be added in the list for a registration area any guess akash uh, nearby uh, whenever uh, uh, i mean a user is moving okay 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 so basically it is based on the mobility pattern of the user equipment for example yeah. suppose suppose uh, uh, in a bus suppose i have a bus and in this bus a iot device is there that means uh, it has got an 5g connection so it is a kind of a uv and this bus travels from say uh, anand vihar in delhi to uh, new delhi railway station right so this area if you uh, see may consist of various tas right ta 1 2 3 9 and so on tan okay so this bus every day goes new delhi comes back so system knows that this bus is going from anand bihar to railway station on daily basis so it will create a registration area for the specific ue like this that it will consist of all these tas so and whenever uh, ue is in idle mode the paging will be done in the registration area right so what is the benefit of having a registration area instead of tracking area uh, it will become a faster precise identification like it it will be very easy to locate the user sir because we know that uh, area in which general hand off and uh, yeah yeah so main idea behind defining registration area was to reduce signaling overhead to reduce signaling overhead so how the signaling overhead will be reduced akash uh because uh, now uh, it will automatically predict uh, what uh, what is the next uh, cell is going to be so without uh, 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 i mean uh, from the core network it doesn't have to switch uh, to the new cell and it will automatically switch okay let me explain further suppose there are uh, ta1 ta2 ta3 ta4 right uh, let us assume that there are only four ta in a registration area if this registration concept was not there then your user equipment when it crosses ta1 to ta2 it has to do an update with the mf that is called mobility update right again from if it moves from ta2 to ta3 it has to do a mobility update 4g it is it happens like that and then again it has to do a mobility update and again while coming back it has to do so it has to do n number of mobility update which is adding to the signaling right so uh, and also the battery of that chip will uh, uh, drain because every time it has to go because go active and 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 do a mobility update right so with the registration area concept we have reduced a, a huge amount of uh signaling overhead is this clear akash uh, yes sir but uh, uh, i have one question is yeah. that uh, uh, isn't the requirement uh, for the uh, i mean the location the position of the device uh, uh, needs to be more accurate for 5g so location is nothing to do with mobility update basically so location will come suppose suppose uh, 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 the bus is programmed to provide Uh, location right so that location will come as a data right so whatever is program suppose you have program that every 5 minute it should pass on the location or 10 minute so at that point of time it has to just 
send a small uh, uh, data message to the server and done. These signaling are over and above the data. So those are user plane data. So user plane data, whatever you have defined for that IoT device, it will be doing. There is no doubt about it. But we are reducing the signaling overhead, right? Suppose. But, sir, uh, sir, yeah, uh, but if uh, there is a car nearby, uh, hmm. which is also traveling parallelly to the bus, but hmm. uh, some somewhere they take a detour. I mean, they. Uh, I mean, their paths. Uh, uh, separate. So, isn't uh, isn't the uh, I mean the core network get confused if uh, their location is not accurate? No, no, no. So it's not about so here registration area is unique to a user. This concept is very new. Earlier the straight tracking area was common kind of right. Yeah. It was not a uh, unique to a particular UE right. So hmm. uh, it it was not specific to a here we have made registration area unique to a device and not only that there is one more concept one is that when you uh, provision a customer into the database you can define its registration area first from the day one if you know that this particular user is an iot device and it has to always remain at one location suppose it's a static IoT device. Suppose your freeze is having or your tube light is having that. So you know the precise location where it is located. So uh, you define uh, its registration area as only a kind of a particular cell, right? Within that cell only it has to remain, right? So it will not do even a mobility update. It will only do a periodic update, right? So that's the concept which has come in 5G that depending upon uh, the mobility pattern of a device, registration area would be set. That is one. Second concept is that it learns. Suppose when my number is provisioned, then it may not be having a registration area uh, defined for me properly. But over a period of time, they will notice that I go to my office that is NTI Pred from my home that is in Vasundhra. So I go, that's a 20 kilometer stretch. I go and come back. So they can define this as a registration area for me after learning that my mobility pattern is this. So these are the concept which is a new uh, in 5G. Shall we proceed? Okay, okay, sir. Uh, sir, is this registration area flexible? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, let's say you are going daily to office, but uh, for let's say for a month you go on a tour, and then new registration area will be defined there. So it learns. I, I said that it is a learning, right? So it will see the pattern which is regularly used, right? So if you have start using a regular pattern, suppose suppose you are in Delhi and now in Bangalore. So it will learn and make that as a registration area. But if you are going for a, depend upon what is getting configured that uh, for how long they will learn your, about, about your mobility pattern and will accept as a registration area. That depends upon the configuration. So AI ML uh, kind of a thing will come into picture for such aspects. Okay, so now that we know that user equipment accesses core network through AMF, so that means AMF has to play a key role for authentication of the subscriber. So in fact, AMF doesn't do authentication, but it plays a role in the sense that since somebody is coming through you, so you are opening the door or closing the door kind of. So you play a role in authenticating the subscriber. Of course, authentication has to happen using the AUSF and UDM, uh, but it plays a key role. The next is ciphering and integrity protection. Uh, let me ask, what is ciphering then? What we are talking about when I say ciphering, what I mean, uh, maybe uh, Monica? Yes, sir. So the next uh, function of AMF is ciphering and integrity protection. So what I what we mean by ciphering? Ciphering is uh, encrypting. Right. 
encrypting and uh, second is the integrity protection what that mean integrity means um, like uh, the message will be unchanged it will be sent as it is like no is that... uh, unauthorized uh, uh, modifications are not will not be allowed okay so uh, uh, maybe if somebody else want to uh, uh, up this question and answer in a better way monica you are right uh, but let me uh, ask anybody else okay sir so sir if you like to add upon this sir uh, ciphering means uh, encryption of the data and uh, integrity protection is like uh, whatever i am supposed to send the same information is received it has not been modified uh, in the middle by someone so i think for that uh, we generally use the hashing we hash that and uh, at the other side also we check whether uh, the same hash is received so that through that we can get integrity sir yes so tusar is right so basically what you are saying that when something is being sent to mf and it is a signaling so we know that you interact with mf is just the control signaling so one is the uh, ciphering part that whatever data you are sending you are encrypting right so when you are encrypting that means no one else in the middle can access to it because it is already in encrypted it is a kind of a garbage even if you are able to somehow intercept this it will be a garbage because you will not be able to decrypt unless you know the keys right and when we say integrity we have to ensure that yes it is coming for the uv from a intended uv only it is coming it's not that a fake uv suppose there is a fake ue right and it starts sending it will use encryption everything fine but it is not coming from a genuine ue so this is your integrity so that means ue will uh, verify that whatever is coming from amf is coming from a right amf amf has to ensure that whatever is coming from ue is from the same ue which it knows it is not from a fake ue so that is your integrity protection okay now the next function of amf is providing a temporary id called guti 4g also we had concept of guti and you guys have perhaps studied so maybe let me ask uh, rakesh if you are aware about guti it is in 4g it is like rnti it is equivalent no, to rnti no no it's not rnti rnti is only on to the radio that is between e node b and user equipment in 4g and here g node b and user we are talking to core now so it is not rnti okay so maybe uh, tusar what is guti sir what i remember is like to keep imsi confidential sir uh, very right so you are right you are you are very right so just just recall and tell me i know this only i remember that keep so you are right you are right let me ask akash akash if he is aware of Uh, sir, it's a uh, it's a combination of uh, three IDs in which uh, uh, no, I I don't remember. Sir. Okay, so let me first tell you, it is G U T I means globally unique temporary ID. What is it? Globally unique temporary ID, and which network function allocates this? it is allocated by amf so just remember that amf allocates a temporary id called guti right so let me just explain what tusar was trying to say so suppose you have a user equipment right so user equipment when it accesses uh, the 
core network it has to prove its identity right it has to prove its identity so it has got options so either it can uh, send mc or it can send a temporary id that is guti if it is already allocated by amf right so for the first time when uv tries to access it is not allocated guti as yet at that point of time it uses the mc in fact we call it supi in 5g supi is subscription permanent id in 5g we call it supi basically yes, one of the supi can be mc and thereafter once a uh, temporary id is allocated the it uses the guti on air interface so that uh, i mean it, it becomes more secure that it is not using is its permanent id so one more thing which i would like to tell you that here in 5g which is different from 4g even mc is not uh, kind of transmitted in a plain text these are encrypted and then only it is sent on the air interface and encrypted one is known as suki subscription concealed id so many new terminology supi suki guti right so guti is globally unique temporary id so what happens that amf creates a table of supi and guti right so amf when it allocates a temporary id to a user equipment it creates a table of supi and guti supi is your just like mc just consider mc and guti and whenever uv is trying to send a guti instead of supi it knows that which supi uh, it has its identity amf already knows because it has created a table so it provides a globally unique temporary id any doubt on this it's very important any doubt sir, why on... is there a need to uh, sir why is there a need to provide a temp <coughs> temporary identity i mean uh, if uh, the mc or uh, supi whatever you call it if it is encrypted uh, if so, it is transmitted in yeah, encrypted right, very right you are very right so most vulnerable uh, portion of the network is the radio interface right yeah and if somebody is able to somehow uh, know the identity of a user equipment for example uh, if you are able to somehow know the identity of a user equipment you will be able to create a fake ue so to uh, avoid i mean so even we are kind of concealing the id and sending onto the 5g network but we also do not want to reveal that because if somebody has the key it can uh, uh, kind of uh, decrypt and have it right somehow but we oh. use temporary id so only for the initial access we use uh, suki that is also encrypted uh, but at all other location i mean occasion we are using the guti on air interface so that if somebody is even able to kind of intercept guti decrypt guti it will not come to know the real identity of the user equipment that is number one and that guti is also not permanent in the sense that for a particular uv uh, guti will uh, changing will keep changing for example whenever there is a mobility update amf will allocate a new guti whenever there is an uh, periodic update amf will allocate a new guti so guti is also changing so just to keep the identity as private as possible uh, these aspects are being done so now somebody was trying to ask question yes yeah, sir uh, but uh, uh, whenever a new uh, sim card is issued either a sim card or maybe e sim i sim whatever uh, you you can call it so the network uh, the operator or uh, the network it provides a set of keys to that particular device right device or uh, you can say sim and uh, uh, using that key only that uh, communication is happening so now if it cannot be uh, uh, i mean impersonated by another uh, some rogue device 
then what is the need of uh, doing much more encryption uh, than that i mean uh, using this a uh, temporary id so, so you should akash you should consider uh, these as layer of security is being built right so yeah. these are various layer of security right so one layer two layer three layer four layer that even if uh, there is breach happening on one layer the i mean he'll not be able to reach to the second layer and third layer and, and fourth layer so these are various layers so those keys which we are talking about is used for integrity protection for example uh, uh, if the keys same keys are provisioned in uv and the same key are there on other side keys yeah. are not exchanged but some kind of hashing we do it and send it and throw a challenge and then we receive and we kind of uh uh, uh open by the key and see whether the same token which i sent has come so this is for integrity protection in the sense that uv knows that it is interacting with the right uh, network and network knows that it is interacting with the right user equipment so there are these are the authentication mechanism we call it 5g akka and in addition uh the user identity is its mc or other 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 supis uh, variables so that is also to be kept secret and that's why uh, when encryption is done that decryption is not even done by emf it is the the corresponding private key is with udm right so that's why i said emf plays a key role in authentication because it also it may not uh, be able to decrypt a a, a suki which is coming into supi so it it goes to udm which has a private key corresponding it decrypts and then tells emf that yes this is the supi right so that then it it creates a table of supi and guti and allocate guti to the user equipment so there are layers of security built in is that so, okay? uh, Uh, i think uh, uh, there may be the reason uh, this may be the reason behind the physical sim because if uh, anybody can get access to a physical sim and then he uh, copies those the keys then um, multiple sessions uh, can be created using the same key right so in order to avoid such uh, uh, i mean such kind of uh, breach maybe uh, this a uh, temporary identity i mean i don't know i it just came to my mind because a physical <laughs> sim can be uh, i mean Uh, so, example, so, uh, like, so we are having a session on SIM mm-hmm. uh, by Idemia itself. So Idemia okay. team has uh, today confirmed. Uh, so okay, okay. Uh, Germany, somebody will be taking the session. So, so many many security protocols are uh, used inside the SIM, and uh, he will take one hour session. So I hope uh, uh, the technicality inside would be uh, covered there. So let us. Okay. Uh, learn that aspect uh, in that session, right? Yeah. Okay. Sir. Okay. And the finally, since AMF knows location and various metadata, so it also uh, uh, helps in lawful interception. An access point of AMF is again kind of uh, uh, AMF. I mean, access point for UE is AMF. So the interception it plays a role in a lawful interception which we have. so just see we we were able to cover only one network function that is amf and we took almost one hour more than an hour <laughs> okay let's let's look at a very very brief handover process because amf also does mobility management so just see this an example in a very very simple way so suppose uh, this is your user equipment this is your user equipment which is uh, say a vehicle or say an user is sitting in the vehicle and it is being served by this g node b so we are calling this as a source g node b right and being handled by say this amf now uh, there are other g node b in the area so when vehicle is moving what it does it measures the signal being received from all other g node b nearby right it measures and it kind of reports the measurement to the connected g node b where it has uh, i mean g node b which is the source g node b for it so this we call it rrc measurement 
control and report so it is basically measuring the signal quality signal level etc and reporting to this g node b now the source g node b is kind of uh, seeing these parameters and decides whether now it has to hand over to the next g node b so when the signal quality signal level etc is uh, much better compared to the source one so it takes a decision we call it handover decision so source g node b is taking a handover decision right so they have a interface now uh, they have interface with all other g node b xn interface we call it so on to that this handover will take place and of course the amf uh, uh, controls it so now if suppose this g node b is uh, say connected to uh, this amf right so here even the amf transfer will also take place so once this g node b has taken a decision of handover it will ask the target g node b for a handover so request and acknowledgement will happen and then handover will be triggered so the i mean all the context will be transferred to the next g node b and also to the next amf if amf is changing if it is not changing then this amf will remain so what is required is the path change we have understood about the pdu session which is coming from g node b now the path change is happening that instead of this g node b now traffic will come from this g node b so this g node b may have a physical uh, connection right physical backhaul uh, onto the core network so path switch is happening so path switch request that amf takes that decision and then path switch acknowledgement and finally uh, data goes to the upf but, uh, through other g node b now so this is a very very high level of handover process for inter g node b mobility which is handled by amf okay so now uh, we have uh, uh, hello yes uh, sir as uh, <coughs> in gs and uh, 2g when the other uh, uh, base station signal uh, uh, goes uh, beyond a certain limit of that we are receiving from previous one then handover uh, occurs so is it the same procedure followed in this you like should say significantly similar. high you should you should say it similar yes you should say it similar so exact uh, procedure may vary but it is concept wise it is similar now uh, let us talk about various interfaces uh, which amf would be having so uh, just see what are the interfaces so what is the interface with the user equipment just tell me that what is the name of the interface n1 n1 n1, n1. n1. so all those signaling we call it nas i think pdg uh, sunil sir was explaining this as is what access stratum so this is non access stratum kind of a signaling right which is signaling is happening between ue and the core network and g node of course traffic comes from g node b g node b is kind of a transparent here so uh, n1 interface is for nas signaling between ue and the mf now all those uh, mobility management and all uh, uh, is on n2 interface amf controls the mobility and amf has to consult udm because the subscriber data will be there in the unified data management even the data network profile will be here so it has to consult which user to be allowed a particular service or not so it has to access udm and then uh, policy control function so it also talks to policy control function because policy uh, related decisions are taken by pcf so it also uh, uh, uses pcf services on n15 interface i would request that uh, uh, you should uh, try to remember these interfaces okay so now let's look at the next network function which is smf SMF is your session management function. Just see where it is located. It has also got interfaces with AMF, UDM, PCF, UPF. We will talk about that. Okay. So as the name suggests, 
so before i uh, tell you the functions let uh, can somebody tell me that what was the equivalent network function in 4g maybe uh, lakshmi lakshmi please be quick so what is the equivalent network function of smf in 4g Uh, is it stw i uh, am not sure no problem monica yes sir <laughs> did you hear my question or should i repeat? no sir can you please repeat it sir please <laughs> <laughs> my question is what is the equivalent network function of this smf in 4g yeah session okay rahul chahan sorry sir it might be mme only ability management function so akash have answered uh, right so basically mobility management entity in in 4g uh, it was split into two part one in 5g amf and then smf right so session management function and amf function in 4g was being done by mme itself okay so as the name suggest what could be uh, various functions of uh, smf any one of you uh, do you recall i i talked about pdu session yes sir we need to establish and maintain a pdu session yes so uh, the creation of a pdu session modification of a pdu session termination of a pdu session for that instruction is given by smf i mean smf does that uh, i mean instruct all the relevant network functions below in user plane to create so basically creation modification and deletion of pdu session so session management is done by smf what is the next function so the next function of smf is about quality of service quality of service yeah are they uh, just a moment yeah so quality of service so uh, can somebody guess what smf will do in terms of uh, quality of service any guess akash it will it will assign a particular qos uh, to a particular pdu session and it will input, uh, i mean uh, it will make sure that uh, that uh, qos i mean Uh, that QoS is enforced just like slides. Yeah, right. So you are right. So basically, uh, if you look at SMF, it gets uh, we call it a PCC rule from PCF policy control function. There is a network function called PCF. So it licenses with PCF and gets PCC rule against that particular. user which want to access a particular service so the pcc rule uh, which it gets it uses to enforce quality of service on to the pdu session so it is not independent uh, uh, for doing all these aspect because it has to liaison with pcf for pcc rule what exactly qs uh, flow to be applied now the next uh, function of smf is that if i am saying if the traffic is an ip traffic it allocates ip address my question here is that why i am saying if
why i am saying if uh, sir you said uh, all the traffic is not ip traffic yes all the traffic is not ip traffic and hence only if this is an ip traffic it allocates an ip address otherwise for a say structured data no ip address is required and this is the difference one of the difference from 4g now we know that pdu session the user plane part is from ue to g node b to upf and then to the data network so one of the responsibility of smf to select and control a right upf right why i am saying right upf can it not select any upf and serve the user or it has to select a right upf when i say right upf what i mean by that select the proper g node b which is having okay. good signal so, strength upf why i need to select a right upf sir because uh, since uh, different qos uh, parameters have been decided uh, for pdo session so whether resources are available in that particular uh, upf or not so <laughs> for that uh, it has to see uh, which upf can provide <coughs> necessary resources okay so sir let me uh, Uh, tell you something else for example suppose uh, uh, you as a small startup is running a gaming service in uh, say bhopal right so you are connected to a 5g network on a particular upf which is located in bhopal right suppose an user want to access your service then which upf smf should select the upf which uh, is connected to your service to sir yes sir so that's why i am saying it has to select and control a right upf so there may be multiple upf connected to different data network or different applications and user accessing if is is trying to access a service which is handled by a particular upf then smf has to select a particular upf or at least an upf which is connected to the other upf okay sir just okay and the next is about quality of service there are some details which i will explain so smf in respect of quality of service because it has to maintain a quality of service for a particular service so it does create three things one is called qs rule quality of service rule which is sent to the user equipment because for uplink traffic it has to identify and map which qfi it is to be applied which quality of service id qfi has to be applied so basically it filters the ip traffic and apply a qfi that filtering is done based on the qs rule rule provided by smf to the uv am i audible yes sir yes sir okay so the next is that that was uv now the g node b the radio resources so the radio resources lot of qs profiles are there which is to be managed so which profile will be kind of applied for a particular qs that profile is given by smf to the g node b right so you your your 5 qi or equivalent qci in 4g goes to kind of a g node b and then on other side you have upf so there we provide we call it sdf template so three things just remember qs rule to ue qs profile to ran and sdf template this is also called pdu rule pdu rule packet data unit rule is applied to upf this is also a kind of a filter when traffic in say uh, downlink directions are coming it segregates into different bunch of ip flow and allocate a qfi quality of service 
flow ID depending upon what service it is. So that filtering is called, uh, I mean, uh, uh, is done through SDF template or PDU rule provided by SMF. OK, so uh, uh, guys, I would like to complete all the five network functions and then give a break. Is that OK? <coughs> Yo, yes, so yes. other network functions are small and in the sense that it happened quickly. So let's do and give you a break. So now uh, let us look at how it works. So one network function which I have not talked about is called NRF. Network repository functions. What it does is that whenever a new network function is created or modified, it has to register onto the NRF. Right? So NRF will contain kind of information about all the network function. What are those information that can be profile of that and also the address? either IP address or a fully qualified domain name that is uh, its address kind of right. So NRF knows each and every network functions and all its instances. Right, their profile and their location. In this example, suppose Sir, you, yeah, please go uh, ahead. Can you please repeat what is the network function? This is NRF. Uh, no, you are talking about like NRF has details of all the network functions huh. and all the instances of it. So yes. what do we mean exactly by the network function? Not able to get it. So network function. So AMF is your network function. Access okay. and mobility function is a network function. SMF so is all a network function. All these blocks are like network functions. Right. So all are network functions, right? Uh, providing some kind of service. In the control. Sir, in addition to this question, uh, you said whenever a new network function is added, so then NRF will be updated like this. Uh, so are the network function uh, are aren't these fixed or they are variable? Like uh, some network may have different uh, different number of network function. Yeah, yeah. So it is it is very very flexible, right? So you can have n number of AMF instances, right? So suppose if your traffic is high, then you have many AMF instances working. It, as you grow, I mean day by day in a traffic, you have to add more number of AMF, right? These AMF has nothing but software pieces running on a cloud or net, uh, uh, any, any hardware, right? So once your traffic is growing, you need to uh, add more and more instances of AMF, right? Uh, so I meant apart from this five six network function, other network function may also be there or only these are there. So there are there are 15, 16 network functions. So five I am trying to cover in this session and five I will be covering in the next session. I mean today itself and five I will be giving you assignment. <laughs> OK, so major part again, uh, I actually wanted to ask that. Uh, in any network, are these uh, all network function or uh, number of these network function is fixed uh, like different network function, not uh, like AMF will be there and SMF will be there and other. So yeah, will so this be fixed? These, or? Five, these five uh, network function which I'm talking about are the building block and will be available in each 5G network. There are certain network function which may be there or may not be there. For example, uh, I'll talk about a network slice selection function. So suppose uh, if, if 5G network hypothetically is not using the slice function, right? So it may not require NSSF, right? And suppose you are trying to create a private 5G network. So where billing charging is not a requirement for you. So those network functions related to billing charging you may not be having. In a private 5G network, you may not require uh, lawful interception. So network functions related to lawful interception, you may not be deploying. So depend, uh, suppose it has also got SMS function. So suppose you are not offering SMS service, hypothetical, you need not deploy uh, 
uh, SMS functions. So depending upon uh, which service, which native service you want to actually offer, you will be uh, putting the network function. So there are certain building block which is required for any kind of 5G network and there are certain network function for a specific service. Oh, okay, sir, understood. Okay, good. So, uh, okay, so here as I said that all other network function, whenever they are installed, uh, they register onto NRF. So NRF will have address and profile of all network functions. So let us take an example that a new uh, SMF is created. So it, it register onto the NRF and then it gives an acknowledgement that yes, it has been created. Now let us take an example that a user equipment want to make a PDU session. A session establishment request is coming and that will come to AMF, right? Because uh, the UE access to the core is with AMF only. So now AMF has to direct one of the SMF, right? There may be many SMF in the network. So how to know how many SMF are there and which is the correct SMF? So it does a discovery. So NRF function is the discovery. So it will trigger NRF, talk to NRF and say that, tell me the list of all the SMF with their profile. So some kind of request will go and it will uh, provide list of all SMF with their address and also their profile. AMF will choose the correct SMF reading the profile and the request coming from the user. And once that is done, then it, it instruct SMF to create a PDU session and SMF does that. So this is a kind of creation of PDU session, the role of SMF. Okay, so what are the interfaces of SMF? So now uh, let me ask, it is also written that N11 interface is between SMF and AMF. Monica, tell me it, what is the purpose of this uh, N11, one of the major purpose? Uh, so it is uh, Sir, once the user uh, wants to start a session, then AMF will communicate SMF to yes, very create right. that session. Yeah, AMF instruct SMF to create a session on N11 interface. Now, uh, N7, who is going to answer this N7 interface? Maybe uh, uh, Lakshmi? Yes, sir. So I was asking about N7 interface. Uh, I just discussed. I discussed that SMF will receive PCC rule from PCF. That means policy related aspects or the instruction it receives from PCF. For that purpose, we have N7 interface. Now somebody tell me the N10 interface. Sir, it, will, uh, it, will, it will authenticate uh, the subscriber based on the subscriber information stored in India. So authentication is already over. Then only MF is asking SMF to create a session. It is just a subscriber profile which SMF wants from UDM so that yeah. uh, correct kind of QS, whether a particular service which trying to access is actually subscribed by uh, the customer or not. So we, it is to access the subscriber profile and data network profile. And what about N4? Between SMF and UPF, maybe Rakesh Goel. So maybe the QoS. Yeah, so PDU session has to be created here, right? In the user plane. That is between UEG node B and UPF. So actual uh, user plane has to be created by UPF itself, right? And QS flow is also to be managed by UPF. So SMF instruct, first of all, it has to select an UPF, a write UPF, and also ask UPF to ensure the quality of service, what it is uh, telling. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. 
Now the next network function is user plane function. So I think uh, we have already covered this somehow. So user plane uh, function is in the user plane itself. The, the, it is part of the PDU session. So PDU session flows through UPF, UE, Z node B, UPF and then to the data network. So it is right sitting into the user plane. So that means uh, uh, the actual data forwarding etc. will be done by UPF. Now tell me when a user equipment is moving from suppose this is an UV from one G node B to other G node B right from this area it is coming to this area. So your G node B is changing from say G node B 1 to G node B 2. What is remaining common? Can somebody tell me that what is remaining which is same as earlier even if a UV is moving from one G node B to other G node B? Rahul Chauhan. Registration. Regist yes, the registration area. No, I'm telling about you tell me the network function. A so here a AMF, AMF. So AMF is not in user plane, right? I'm talking about the user plane traffic. Uh, one G node B, it has moved to the other G node B. So as, as we discussed that, uh, the, I mean, the path change is happening. Your PDU session, which was from G node B1, now is through G node B2, right? But which network function is still common? UPF. Yes. UPF. Yes, yes, yes. So what does it mean? It means that the UPF acts as a anchor point during NG RAN mobility. When there is a mobility from one G node B to other G node B, your UPF remains same and that is called anchor point for NG RAN mobility. Is this clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now uh, we discussed that since PDU session is created onto the user plane and UPF is sitting in the user plane, so it has to ensure the quality of service which it has got instruction from SMF. This is also no issue. And earlier while discussing SMF. Uh, we said that uh, the traffic filtering has to be done. So we call it SDF, service data flow filtering and applying a QS flow ID. So when downlink traffic as, uh, so this is your data network or any service. So all those IP flows are coming here to the UPF from one data network, it may be from other data network and so on. So how to identify and apply quality of service because UPF has got filters from SMF. It applies those filters and segregate these IPs flows into different QS flow ID, QFI. It applies a QFI ID, right? And, and pass on the traffic to that particular QS flow. So SDF filtering and applying QS flow. The next function is of course packet routing and forwarding because it is connected to the data network on one side and Z node B to other side. So all those packet forwarding and routing is done here at UPF. What are the interfaces of UPF? So N3 interface with uh, Z node B that here the tunnel uh, is created. N6 interface with data network, N4 interface with SMF, so three interfaces. There is one more interface which is not written here. Is like suppose there are more than one UPF. As I said, there can be even intermediate UPF. Suppose tra traffic is coming here and then it is, it is going. So basically the interface between two UPF is called N9. Please remember this. It is N9. Now uh, let us look at, yeah, please go ahead. 
So why no interface is shown between U and G node B? UE, this is an air interface. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, N1 is also going through this, although it is shown here, transparent. G node B is kind of a transparent. So actual connection of the UE is through G node B, wherever it goes, whether it's a user plane or control plane. But the, I mean, the connection is directly to the MF or core part. Now the UDM, Unified Data Management. So let us look at what it is. First, it contains registry of subscriber information and data network profile. So just like your HLR or HSS earlier, right? So why data network profile? Because multiple data network will be connected for different services and which user can access to which data network profile that table would be there in the UDM. Next is uh, the UDM is involved in the access authorization. So what is access authorization? Not exactly it may have. Akash. Uh, whether the particular subscriber is authorized to access the network or not. Yeah, so subscriber profile it has, which it gives to AMF or SMF as the case may be, right? Mm. So basically two, two things I want to explain here. One is that Akash talked about various keys which a SIM is having and the same key will be there with UDM. So all those keys for authentication. Security keys or whatever keys for authentication purpose. Number one. Secondly, when user equipment is sending its concealed ID, it can be decrypted uh, by the UDM itself. So the corresponding private key is also with UDM. So all those security key, you can say, keys are also with UDM, right? In addition to the subscriber profile and network profile. So that's why it is involved in the access authorization. It decrypts the Suki into Supi and also uh, all those token management is done uh, by the UDM. Okay, so that's why we call it, it is involved in registration and mobility management. In fact, UDM knows that which AMF is actually handling a particular UE because AMF has to contact UDM at the time of authentication so UDM knows that which AMF is actually handling a particular UE at that point of time. So that's why we, uh, and it plays a role in mobility management, inter AMF mobility management, it plays a role. And then of course it tells AMF and SMF that what is allowed or not allowed, which QS profile or data network a UE can connect or not connect because it has got all the profile. What are the interfaces? Very simple, NET with AMF, N10 with SMF, because these are the network function which uses the UDM services. This is the last network function which is uh, which we are doing in part one, which is the policy control function. So we have discussed a bit about it, that all policy related decisions are taken by PCF. So one of the function is that it takes dynamic uh, decision based on present network condition. That means if a particular time, if a subscriber is in area where uh, say no cell is there or, or, or poor coverage is there, it may ask SMF to throttle the customer. That means reduce the data rate or even do not allow a PDU session itself, right? So it's, it takes a dynamic decision also in addition to the, we talked about it provides PCC rule to SMF. It also takes dynamic decision and also decides on the correct resource allocation because all those policy related decisions are taken by PCF in the network. What are the PCF interfaces? That is N7 with SMF. 
and N15 with AMF. So SMF and AMF. I also see a connection with data network. Can somebody guess what it is for? Can you guess why this is connected to data network PCF? Tusar? Tusar? Uh, sir, uh, because uh, as soon as uh, his data limit is out, we can stop that PDU session, sir. Whether he has uh, all at all. Yeah, so basically, uh, as I said, this data network is is not a single data network, but it can be uh, various service, maybe uh, AR VR service or gaming service or any kind of service, right? So what happens? Let me explain a bit that whenever suppose user is onto the network and you have created a PDU session, right? And within the PDU session, you have a default QS flow. Are created right so using this default qs flow the user equipment suppose uh, is trying to access ar vr right uh, and then ar vr knows that this uh, this particular server knows that yes this ue has subscribed to this service but to offer ar vr it requires a different quality of service so at that point of time it talks to the PCF, right? It talks to the PCF that this user is trying to access ARVR, which it has subscribed. And to give this service, this kind of QoS is required. So then PCF instruct SMF and then SMF to UPF to provide more number of QoS flow with say GBR or certain other QoS parameters. And then the new uh, QoS flow is added for this ARVR service. So for that purpose, uh, this PCF is connected to the data network. So with this, uh, we close our session.